Hi, I'm Thomas H.P. Apple. And I'm Luke Coos Brennan. Welcome to this week's edition of WDT. Welcome. Welcome indeed. Yeah, how you doing? Not too bad. Yeah, good. It's good to hear. Been a good week? No. No, it hasn't. Oh, really? Yep. No. Nah. Whatever. Should we just segue straight into the previews? Yes, uh, the reviews? Yep. Let's get this over and done with. Done. I'll uh, actually start on uh, the matchup involving our current champion versus this week. Actually, there were multiple names this week, which I think is a first for the Scala League. Uh, Kuz versus Tarko. Tarko had his uh, team starting off as the Cray Cray hashtag stab stabs. By the end of the week, they were the Coos Tonight hashtag Tarko Systems. I may have been responsible for that. I did message him that he was my Coos Tonight Coos. on the weekend. And how true it was. The curse of the Tarko versus Coos continues. 4 and O. Oh, Tarko is and answering. Oh, gets up again. Let's have a look at uh, what happened last week. So, just to give you a brief rundown, apart from Bledslow missing four games with a shin bruise... I think um, he was alright this time, and by the end of the week he couldn't walk or something. Yeah, no, I've got a shin bruise. I'm itching to come on. I'm biting my nails, ready to come on. Ready to go? Uh, now I can't walk. How's that happen? I don't know. But apart from that, Horford, Batum, Lawson, and Tristan Thompson all had their worst games of the season. And for Tarko, Bogut not only had his best game of the season, had his two best games of the season. Dirk Nowitzki dropped to 55, and he hadn't been over 30 all year. Mm-hmm. And Bradley Beal had his two best games of the season as well. Everything that could have gone wrong for you, pretty much did. Yeah. Targo's team went from the week four, averaging under 30, to averaging over 35. I think from now on, whenever you play Targo, we just not even play the week. Let's just give the win to Targo. Yeah, I might just go on holidays that week. That'd be awesome. Thank Enjoy you. the Takuzi Carp, you fag. Thanks, Targo. So let's move along to uh, HP versus Big Bay Bay. Um, we won't spend too much time on this. Um, even with an implosion from your team uh, on the second last day of the week where everyone seemed to come down with drades, um, you still easy victory. Uh, notable, Blake Griffin cracked the 200 mile with 205. Uh, he did well, but yeah. When I uh, woke up on Sunday morning to see a plethora of red symbols against my players' names, DTD and O, had an absolute freak out. Big Bear's team was good yesterday, but did enough at the start to get away with the W, so happy to be 3-1 and one at the moment. Yeah, That's nice. right, 3-1. and one. Nice work, champ. That's, uh, must feel good. Must feel good. Um, Mal and Scotty. Mal and Scotty. Uh, I think when we previewed this matchup last week, we said we won't spend too much time on it. I don't think Mal's team turned up this week. Didn't even crack the 900 mark. Scotty's team continue, continued its domination, nearly 1,300 again. CP3, 244 fantasy points this week. And he had like 16 and 17 today in less than half an hour of action. Ridiculous. Uh, for Mal, only Durant and Teague managed to score over 100. Scotty gets another win and uh, yeah, what can you say? His team's looking good. It is. Uh, we'll get to Mal's team a bit later on. <laughs> Now, Koo's going to review uh, probably the most interesting matchup of the week, Jibo versus Rue. Um, if I recall, I just stabbed myself with the pen, that was amazing. Um, if I, we recall, we go back and rewind the tape. Um, we were divided mm. on uh, who would win this matchup. I went Jibo having five extra games. You stuck with Rue being good at fantasy basketball. <laughs> um, and uh, you won. Um, came down to the last uh, game of the day, which was Sacramento versus, who were they playing again? <clears throat> Didn't even matter. And they Lakers, I think. Lakers, yeah, Lakers. yeah. So all Isaiah Thomas had to do was score 26 fantasy points against Steve Blake. Steve Blake. Um, we'll get to what happened later um, in the crap line of the week. But uh, yeah, Roos team, too good. Holds on the victory on the last day. Mm. Wins by 10 points. Great match points, yeah. Nice and close. It was fantastic. It was sparked a lot of email banter which was good to see i think i returned to the office this afternoon and there were there were only 62 league emails oh, only only, only oh. 62 so i just flicked through them very quickly in my spare time mm. so well worth well worthwhile of having a look oh definitely let's move on to our favorite segment of the week stat line and crap line of the week nice work Coos. 
face. You won't be able to see what I did because we <laughs> yeah. But we'll hear it and yeah. obviously to witness it. Yeah, that's thanks. amazing. I'm glad. I'm glad. Now, stat line, there were a couple of interesting lines this week. Uh, one, Anthony Davis, despite only having two games, scoring over 100 fantasy points. Uh, Lance Stevenson, another triple double on Tarkov's bench. Didn't, didn't matter. <laughs> Uh, but there was really one standout line of the week. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge uh, from Scotty's team. Stat one read like this. 30 points, 21 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals, and 3 blocks. 69 fantasy points. Not that it mattered. He was going to win anyway, but... Yeah, very still, impressive. A, still a massive, massive result from uh, LaMarcus. What an awesome black person's name that is as well. LaMarcus. There's no white people called LaMarcus. No, there's not. <laughs> um, although your kids have close names to LaMarcus. If you had an extra one, you might throw LaMarcus out there. doesn't start with C, though. That doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, that's true. Camarcus. Camarcus. Nice. Um, so we'll go transition then on to crap line of the week. Um, there was a few up. Yeah, for this one, Tristan Thompson. He was awesome for me. <laughs> Pulled out 3.5. Thanks, buddy. Nice. Um, but, look, we've got to go with IT3, Isaiah Thomas. Needing 26 points to win for the last game of the day today from for Jebo's team. He'd pulled out a 36 and a 31 in the last two games. Surely he was going to do it. Sure. Yeah, if not get close. He played 30 minutes against Steve Blake. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd think he'd have a good chance. Shot 4 from 11 from the field. For nine points, four assists, three rebounds, four turnovers. Oh dear. 15.5 fantasy points. Leaving Jibo, 10 shy of the draw, 10 and a half shy of victory. 0 and 4 for Jibo. 0 and 4. Good work, Isaiah. Want to go through a pickups, bud? Yeah, let's cover off these. We'll go through them pretty quickly. Uh, first pickup of the week, Taco dropping NKG, picking up Jordan Hill, who's been a bit of a surprise packer from the Lakers, $5. Mm. Uh, Mal dropping uh, Markeith Morris, who he spent $7 on and <laughs> dropped Tim Duncan for, picking up Ryan Anderson for $4. Maybe you should have just done that straight away. I think he got the wrong Morris brother, because when oh. he picked up Markeith... Uh, what's his name? Oh, Marcus. Marcus Morris started yeah. dominating. Did you get the wrong Morris? Maybe. Are they, they're like the same person, like. Yeah, it's, they just swap them interchange them. Tattoos, no, everything's it's weird. It's weird. Uh, next pick up was by myself. Dropped uh, Jose Called Your Mum. Uh, picking up Trey Burke coming back from injury. Uh, $3. Shaky so far, but a uh, good pick up, I think. Today was yeah. pretty bad. Mm. Uh, Big Baby, this is probably the be- possibly the best pick up of the week. Dropping Amir Johnson. Picking up JJ Hickson for a measly dollar. Yeah. JJ's been on fire of late, so nice one, big baby. Good pick up. Uh, this is an interesting one. Jibo dropping the truth. Paul Pierce on the waiver list in fantasy basketball. Picking up Steve Blake for a dollar. Steve Blake has been really good. Jibo does need point guards. As, as long as Nash is out, Blake will be value for that tra- uh, that pick up. But mm. if Nash comes back and Kobe comes back, that could mean Blake goes back to the bench mm. I think it might be yeah we'll see what happens yeah and final pick up of the week most expensive pick up of the week the Coos there was a bit of a fight over this player mm. uh, went into the Orlando Magic Stadium line this week Coos dropping Plumley, picking up Victor Oladipo who really should be in a dunk contest this year just throwing that out NBA if you're watching by any chance please dunk what contest. do you mean yeah that 360 against the Nets was quality cool. do you get extra points for that I need them I need them. You do need them. Um, look, we're not going to do my usual rant segment this week. We're just going to talk about trades because there was a lot of trades this week and mm-hmm. some massive name trades. Um, we've never seen trades of this nature before. We've never seen mm-hmm. the one and the two pick in the draft change never. teams. We've never seen that. Um, you know, you caught it a few weeks ago. You said, there are no trades. Mm. There are no trades whatsoever. And, you know, you talked about positional things. If you need, if your best shooting guard is Ashton Kutcher, maybe you should trade a position of strength to get a better shooting guard. It's not really what happened this week, though, is it? It's not. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Big Baby traded LeBron James mm-hmm. and Dwayne Wade. Dwayne. Dwayne Wade. For Kevin Durant mm-hmm. and Jeremy Lin. Hmm. Interesting. What did you th- What do you think of the trade, Um, 
initially, I thought that Big Baby had raped Mel. Mm -hmm. Hard. Mm -hmm. Hard. Hard. Like, I was actually going to get a number for a battered women's shelter for Mel to come up here on the bottom of the screen. We could still do that later, maybe edit it in. Yeah. But Dwayne Wade had a cracking end to the week. And Mel needed shooting guards. Shooting guards. I'm starting to come around to the trade. Yeah, I agree. First On first look, I was like, terrible trade. Dwayne yeah. Wade getting rested, LBJ not being his usual self, you know, Big Baby picking up Durant, and, you know, Lynn. But I'm starting to think it's a fairly even trade. I think so. I, like LBJ, as he said, has been very average at the start of the year, but LBJ is a very motivated player. He's the type of player that wants to win the MVP. He doesn't just want to win the championship. He wants all the trophies. Yeah, really. And he'll... He'll do that. He'll come back, and he, I, I have no doubt he'll finish the season averaging 37 and 7 like he does every year. Mm. He's a freaking superstar. Yes. And Durant is a quality player, but now Westbrook's back, taking a, or hopefully taking some more points away from him. Uh, I think it could be an even trade. If Wade stays on the court, I reckon Mal's got the better end of it now. That, that's the key. That is the key. We, we'll revisit this. Maybe just do a little quick check every week to see who's winning it. It might hurt Mal come our finals turn time. That's it. They do tend to rest their stars. At they the they do. Where Durant tends to play every game. Last year, they played Rusty and Durant every game, mm -hmm. even if it was only for 10 minutes. They still started them. Exactly right. So it might hurt him come winter. Mm. Now, the second trade of the week. Mm. Mm. Crazy. Jeebo. Not doing so well this year. Doing about as well as his number one pick, Derek Rose, who he traded along with David Lee of the Golden State Warriors to Rue, early favourite for the Scala, in exchange for Damian Lillard and Aaron Afalafalofalo. Wait, wait, so let me get that right. G traded his first and fourth round picks mm -hmm. for Rue's fourth round pick mm. and some kebab sounding guy's name that he got off the waiver wire. Okay. That when I read when I saw that come through um, Friday last week, I think it was. You are correct. I went to work in the most angry state I've been in in a long period of time. Uh, I was about to wrap bubble wrap around the Scala Trophy and go have it delivered to Rue's house because with I think it would have given Rue something like seven players in the top four rounds. It was ridiculous. His team looks looked so strong, it was unbelievable. But wait, something happened, didn't it? Something happened. Funnily enough, it was against Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers. Derek Rose did his knee, the right knee. Are you kidding me? Jibo all of a sudden looks like an absolute genius. How the hell has that happened? It was the worst trade I've ever seen. That's turned out to be the best trade that I've ever seen. He's I've essentially no got idea how it happened. Lillard and Afalo from David Lee. Which is quality. Which is quality. Look, let's... Yeah, I'm still blown away by We could get a little bit... We could violent, get heated. I could throw angry. things. I'm actually a bit sad because I love watching Derek Rose. I think we all love watching Derek oh, Rose. He's doubt. absolutely quality. I'm not as sad that he's not on Rue's team. I'm a little bit happy about that. I'm a little bit happy about that as well. And he's taken Lillard and Lee away from... Oh, sorry, Lillard away from his team. Mm. So, kind of evens things up a little bit more. It does. Um, what, is Rue going to hang on to him like a couple of us have done the last couple of years? Look, I think you've got to give it a little bit of time. Mm. Give it, you know, until you find out exactly what's happening with D. Rose. There is, you know, the rumours floating around that you might get, you know, a quick fix done. But considering what happened last year... I think it's a pretty safe bet he's going to be out the rest of the season. So, he, There's players that seem to want to come back and mm -hmm. compete, and there's players that seem to, I won't say soft, but they seem to be a little softer. Yep. And Derrick Rose seems to be s softer. Yep. Look at Westbrook. He had the same meniscus injury or whatever it was. He was out for four to six weeks, which was two games. So, four to six days. Yeah, four <laughs> to six days. So I don't know. If he is mentally tough and strong, he could come back. And Rue definitely has the depth in his team to hold on to him for a bit and see what happens. If he comes back for the finals, we might all be fucked. Mm, true. He's a 
way too serious for WDT on a Monday. It really is. It was a serious week. It was a serious week. It really was. Let's well, let's just get into the previews and yeah. start giving them a shit again. That yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you're going to go through me versus the big baby. This is a tough matchup to call. Big baby was a, a worthy loser against me. Uh, Kuz coming off a loss against Taco and uh, whatever his team name was, but it was awesome. Loved it. Uh, looking at it, Kuz has got a few injury problems. Rudy Gay day today, Russell Westbrook day today, Eric Bledsoe's dead. Um, games, looking at it, I'm going to go with Big Baby. I think Big Baby is going to be up, get up this week. His team was great. He was a bit unlucky, had less games than me, even that with the injuries. But um, I'm going with the commissioner. I only have four guys with four games this week. The rest have three. And there's a lot of injuries in those games. I'm going to tip against myself. It's a momentous occasion. Someone is not tipping themselves to win. <sighs> I am speechless. All right, let's move on. Um, yeah. HP versus Jibo. Um, H. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Let's move on. Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, next one. Uh, Peacock. This might be just as quick. Yeah, Mal versus Rue. 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 <laughs> okay. Last, uh, but definitely not least. Not least no. um, because Taco's team is the Scotty Does hashtag Stalk and Rapers. It's true. Do the people at home need to see the picture? Um, it kind of looks like Scott. It's a little mug shot of Scott there um, from a police sketch artist, probably from one of his rape outings. Yeah, the thing is that kid's playground just down the road. Mm, yes, it could have been. First, the Mandy Patinkin Titans, um, which is from a children's movie. So, yeah, that makes it even <laughs> more <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, look, Taco's really, really good last week. Um, but to be fair, I don't think he was as good as he just gave me coups tonight. So, uh, yeah, look, easy, Scotty. Yeah, so sure. as well. I think it's going to be a lot closer than what we think. Um, yep. Taco's team has really come along well. When Kobe's back, he's going to be tough to beat. He is. Just based on last week, though, I think Scotty's going to get another W. Yeah, th- four massive scores from Scott. It's not going to not going to change this week. Definitely. Chris Paul, holy shit. Why did we not pick him? Why didn't he go number one based on this form? Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. You and me had three and four. We had him to pick, and we didn't. We left him for Scott. Terrible mistake by both of us. So we're picking the same again this week? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the same's a bit, a bit sad. But, uh, but you did the against yourself. That's what you're against myself. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. It's a first. It's a WDT first. Confidence is sky high here in the... Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully we've wrapped that up well. It was a bit serious, but it was a serious week. Uh, hopefully next week we'll come back with a bit more fun. Um, Smithy just walked by there. Can you flick the lights off for us? He's not no, listening. No, he's not listening at all. No. Um, you know, WTT proudly brought to you by Rico. Um, Thanks, Rico. Cool. Imagine change. That's a good line. No, it's terrible. It's really bad. Cool. Um, HP and Coos out. Come <laughs> on.